okay and the biblical concept of spiritual warfare God does not have to fight to defeat Satan now God has victory over Satan already Matthew 12 28 to 29 Jesus said that you know unless I'm bound the strong man I cannot steal from him so I can rob from him I can take people away from the power of Satan because I have already bound the strong man Satan so God has already had defeat defeated Satan already that God doesn't have to, to fight anymore what God does now is to work on the Christians so that we become stronger he doesn't have to fight Satan Satan has no power at all Satan is under his feet now Christians have to uh, turn Satan away we don't have to fight Satan because God fights he has fought against Satan he has defeated Satan we just follow God and love God and then God will keep Satan away from destroying our life so we don't have to be afraid of Satan attacking us when we love God and follow God Two, Jesus has already given authority to trample on all demonic forces they cannot hurt, hurt us so he has given us authority over all demonic forces we can drive them out if a person has spiritual uh, have demons and the demons cannot hurt us now I, I would say this if a person is you know he has demons his house also would have demons dwelling there then we can drive out the demons from the house and cleanse the house and if the person follow God then he doesn't have to cleanse the house every day and the church if we are loving God and worshiping God and obeying God we don't have to drive out demons from that from there it's only people who have been possessed by demons then the demons stay with them and also stay with their house then we can go and cleanse the house and take away all the idols and help the person to love God and follow God and honor God when he loves God so we can tell people the moment you totally submit to God and trust in God as your Savior you love God and obey God and follow Him and glorify Him and, and uh, obey Him and serve Him Satan will flee from you he will run away from you you say no to Satan Satan will flee from you so we don't have to be afraid they don't have to wait for a long time for the demons to go away but sometimes people it takes a long time to drive out demons because some people sin they have anger they have lust they they don't have a strong motivation to overcome sins now what gives us strong motivation to overcome sins I have strong motivation to overcome sins because of four reasons I've told you before first the motivation is God loves us so much second we are very precious because God made us precious number three when we trust in God love God and obey God and serve him he will bless us he bless our whole life and number four if we don't trust in him we don't obey him we don't serve him and we sin there will be destruction so that gives me all the reason and God has all the resources he has all the resources in the world so I love him and obey him and serve him then he'll bless me in every way so that I have strength to bless other people so that is our motivation to turn away from all sins and not to be afraid of Satan at all when we serve God we don't have to be afraid of Satan at all now I, I will say this if a church has people who disobey God then they could give the devil a foothold in a church for instance some people always fight against the pastor or the pastor is too authoritarian he forced the people to obey him that's not good we don't force people to obey him we guide people to obey the word of uh, to obey God and obey the pastor but not by force we teach the people the importance of obeying uh, God and obeying the pastor but the pastor is not the absolute ruler if the people suggest something for the pastor to change the pastor would need to change if the people say to the pastor well we don't quite understand your sermons uh, please work on it so that we can understand it then the pastor should not be angry with the people he should 
examine his own preaching and find out how he can improve so uh, but if in a church when people fight against each other then they can give the devil a foothold in the church in that way the church need to be you know the problems need to be taken care of now the the way to take care of the problem is not just to drive out demons from the church it's not going to solve the problem they need to talk about it teach biblical teaching so that people will take care of their sins and their fightings and, uh, and the division in the church to so that they will see that those are destructive and teach the people to obey God and love God and follow God and serve God with unity serve God with unity not by force but by unity and in love for each other love for each other then the church doesn't have any foothold for the devil so it's very important that we understand that some churches has given the devil a foothold then they have to take care of the problems and they should not continue to give the devil a foothold okay and then um, three Jesus can give us abundant life Satan comes to steal kill and destroy if we love and obey God Satan can't steal so Jesus wants to give us abundant life he wants to and he can give us abundant life and Satan comes to steal kill and destroy and then when we love and obey God Satan cannot steal from us anymore we don't have to worry about it at all sins give the devil a foothold to attack us so we should build up our relationship with God and reject sin so we should build a strong relationship with God that uh, that we should not give the devil a foothold any kind of sins any kind of anger frustration uh, negative feelings negative thinking any kind of negative thinking like if pastors say oh this serving God is so difficult I'm I, I'm disappointed I have no strength I I want to give up then he's giving the devil a foothold any kind of negative thinking is a foothold to the devil and when we have the truth the righteousness preparation of the gospel faith salvation God's word and prayer we are fighting against spiritual power so when we have the full armor of God then we are fighting against Satan now having the armor of God is not just having it but living it out living in God's truth and his righteousness and the preaching of gospel and the faith in God and salvation uh, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit the God's word and prayer that we live this out now some people I know that some people they every day they will put on the armor of God they will declare they put on the armor of God now if they believe it if they when they say you know they, they put on the, the belts of truth when they believe that yes I want to follow the truth then then they are putting on the armor of God but if they just say it with the mouth they're not following the teachings in the Bible then it, they're not really putting on the armor of God so putting on the armor of God is not just declaring it it's not just saying it but it, living it so have the breastplate of righteousness that we really trust in the righteousness of Christ and we also build up our own righteousness and then we're also preparing ourselves to preach a gospel we really preach a gospel to anyone whenever we have a chance and then we have the shield of faith whenever people attack us whenever Satan attack us in any way whenever there are any difficulties we trust that God will protect us and have salvation we're sure about salvation when we trust in Jesus as our Savior we repent of our sins so that we know for sure that that we have salvation and then we have the Word of God that uh, that we follow the Word of God we believe in the Word of God that is uh, putting on the armor of God but there are some people just say it say it with the mouth doesn't necessarily mean that they have the armor of God okay six now here talks about protection the breastplate of righteousness the helmet of salvation will protect us and the shield of faith will quench the fiery darts darts of Satan so this are for protection and also the truth the belt of truth will give us this foundation 
and the breastplate of righteousness will protect us against accusation of Satan and the helmet of salvation give us assurance of salvation and the shield of faith will quench the fiery darts of Satan so that people cannot attack us and then this will attack God at uh, Satan's dominion we shot the feet with the preparation of the gospel we have the gospel we preach the gospel wherever we go and the sword of the spirit we we believe in the Word of God and we always preach the Word of God we tell people about the promises of God then it's attacking Satan because then we are helping people to believe in Jesus and helping people to obey Jesus when wherever the Word of God is preached it will change people's life that they will obey God and praying in the spirit that will pray in the presence of God in our spirit to worship God to love God and then the presence of God will come and also we pray for blessings on all Christians and protection for Christians and also especially for the Christians who are being persecuted so these are the weapons so here are the protection and then the weapons of the armor of God and when we submit to God and resist the devil he will flee now let me say a little bit about this so how do I arrive at this uh, distinction of the protection and the attack the weapons to attack it's by looking reading each word carefully so when we study the Word of God read the Word of God carefully each word read each word carefully so we need to learn to read the Word of God carefully don't just skim over it, but read it carefully read each word word carefully and find the truth from each word then you find out you know in uh, in, in the Word of God you find out many truth for instance here it talks about uh, 2nd Corinthians the weapons of our warfare so where does the weapon come from the weapon doesn't come from shouting it comes from the mighty being mighty in God that we have the power in God to pull down the strongholds to cast down the arguments and the pride of people and then bring the people to submit to God that every God every thought into captivity uh, to the obedience of Christ so here it talks about the warfare what is the warfare the warfare is to bring people to to love God and submit to God when we submit to God and resist the devil he will flee so it's not very difficult so when we submit to God and resist the devil whenever the devil tempt us we resist the devil Satan wants to devour people we should be sober vigilant and steady in our faith okay so we should um, Satan wants to devour us then we should be sober be uh, clear-minded and be watchful and steady in our faith and then 10 the weapons of our warfare is to cast down arguments and pride and bring people to obedience of Christ so we cast down arguments and pride and negative things against God and bring people to obey God and that's the weapon that is our strength 11 Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth when we follow the Great Commission Jesus will be with us always so when we follow the Great Commission we don't have to be afraid of the devil at all so when we preach the gospel when we bring people to obey the Word of God in our country or when we go to the mission field or when we uh, drive out demons we don't have to be afraid Jesus will be with us and Peter and Paul were in prison or attacked when they preached the gospel in the book of Acts they did not cast out the spirits of rejection or the spirit of religion they just kept preaching the gospel so they did not cast out spirit of rejection of people spirit of religion spirit of Judaism uh, spirit of pride they didn't cast it out at all they didn't do anything like that they just keep praising God and loving God and preaching the gospel so we should follow the book of Acts how to love God and obey God and serve God and how to have victory and uh, in the charismatic churches sometimes they add in different teachings that's not found in the Bible and so we, we shouldn't spend time doing those things we should discern with the teachings 
which of these are from the Bible? Whenever we hear any teaching, we need to examine from the Bible. Now, one teaching I've heard is the go to the court of heaven. I don't know if you have heard about that. If you have heard about that, you can send me a message and then I will respond to that. Uh, to the teaching of going to the court of heaven. They said that if you have problems and you pray and pray and then the problems are not solved, then you need to go to the heaven, uh, the court of heaven to uh, fight against Satan, to declare against Satan that he has no right to steal from you and then you can claim those things back. Now, it's not in the Bible. That the Bible promises that when we love God, when we obey God, when we seek God's kingdom and His righteousness, all these things will be given to us. When we um, love God, God will prepare for us things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of. So the Bible promises us that when we love God and obey Him and come to Him with a true heart, sincere heart, God will bless us. Okay, so people who think that they have to defeat Satan by their own shouting and power often have fear of their insufficiency. They will have fear. They will shout to Satan. But people who know that Jesus already has victory and they are claiming Jesus' victory have guarantee of victory over Satan. So they know that Jesus already has victory. I just trust in God, obey God, serve God. Then I'm fighting against Satan. Then I'm winning people from uh, bringing them from the dominion of Satan into the kingdom of God. Okay, now I'm going to uh, follow this uh, outline as in a sermon. Okay, Negative and positive examples of people that we have talked about this outline. So some people are afraid of attacks from Satan and they are afraid to cast out demons. Some people, now I have met some Christians, they said, I don't cast out demons anymore because I'm afraid that demons will come to me. And some people said, I don't lay hand on people anymore. I'm afraid the demons will come upon me. So they have this fear and they don't obey God. Jesus said, you know, miracles, signs will follow those who believe in me, that they'll cast out demons in my name. So Jesus said, we can cast out demons. And also they'll lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. So Jesus said, we can lay hand on the sick. But these people, they're afraid of Satan and they don't do those two things anymore. So they're afraid of Satan rather than honoring God. So we don't have to be afraid of Satan. We don't have to be afraid to cast out demons. And some people are afraid to go in the mission field. And some people think that sickness and interpersonal problems are attacks from Satan. And many Christians also give Satan a foothold when they sin. So, so these are negative examples. And then positive examples are Christians who are courageous to cast out demons and bring people from witchcraft to Christianity. Christianity. They're not afraid of Satan at all. And God's nature and grace related to spiritual authority. Now, we discern nature and grace. Nature is His inner qualities, the inner qualities and ability of God. Grace is what He does to us to bless us, to help us. Okay? Nature, his, God's nature is His strength, His wisdom, His love, His power, His authority are His nature. And grace is he, that He blesses us. He loves us. He gives us salvation. He gives us strength. He gives us victory over s Satan. He gives us power to overcome sins. Uh, he works in our heart with the Holy Spirit. He prepares blessings for us. He has uh, provision for us. He gives us rewards and He gives us heaven. All these are God's grace, okay? What God does to us. So I hope you discern these two words. So God has total victory over Satan. Is this nature or grace? This is nature. Uh, uh, this is nature. His victory is his nature. Okay, he has victory over Satan. Is grace. He defeat over Satan for us. So his he has victory. He has power. That is his nature. He has victory. He has power. So when you say he has, God has, or God is, God is love. God has power. God has victory. That is his nature. So he, 
has victory over Satan. That is his grace for us. When Jesus died for our sins, that is grace. He died for us. Jesus also said that he could cast out demons because he has bound the strong man Satan. He has already bound the strong man Satan. He has a victory over Satan already. Two, Jesus has promised to give us authority over all power of the enemy. So that is grace. He has promised to give us authority so we can exercise this authority. When we know someone who has demons, then we pray to God and give us strength and help us to repent of our sins before we cast out demons. I know someone who has sins and when we were driving out demons, the person who has demons would stare at this man who has sins, who are living in sin, and this man just fell back. He was so filled with fear when this person who has demons stared at him. So when people have sins, they should repent of the sin and we should all live a life of holiness. And we just say no to sins and we know that those are destructive. So we don't want to look at beautiful women. Now we can look at them as human beings, but we don't just look at, at the beauty. We want to care about them, we want to be nice to them, but we don't want to think about sex or about their beauty when we look at beautiful women. Well, that we're not tempted by their beauty. Okay, so Jesus has promised to give us authority over all power of the enemy. So we have power over Satan, we have power over sins, we don't want to sin anymore, we want to love God and obey God. And God can give us abundant life and do wonderful things in our lives. Abundant life means that we have provisions, we have strength, we have power, and we have uh, ability to bring people in, in the kingdom of God. We can bring people to follow God and love God, and we have victory in Christ, and we have a ministry that is growing, that is abundant life. When we submit our mind and our lives to God, He can do great things through us. So. When we submit to Him, He can do great things and we can have abundant life. Number four, God gives us the whole armor of God to protect us and to help us attack Satan's dominion. So when we have the armor of God to protect us, the breastplate, uh, the helmet of salvation, and the shield of faith is for protection. And then for attacking, we have the, uh, uh, the gospel and then the the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit to attack. So we have the armor of God. God has given us this weapon, this armor of God. And God give us wisdom how to cast down arguments and pride of people. So when we look at this verse, what does God do? God give us wisdom to teach people to submit to God, to obey God. And we ourselves submit to God. We say, Lord, help me to be humble. Help me to overcome sins and bring people to obedience to Christ so that we can help people to obey God. That is wisdom from God that gives us the wisdom and also the power of the Holy Spirit to help people to change our spiritual life. And Jesus stays with us when we preach the gospel in order to protect us and give us power to attack Satan's dominion. So He, he will stay with us. He will be with us when we preach the gospel. So that is His grace. He will stay with us and give us protection and give us strength. Now, why many Christians are afraid of attacks and a number of Christians are attacked by demons? Why? Because there is a false teaching that all sickness, interpersonal and church problems are attacks from Satan and cause people to fear. So there are many people who fear the power of Satan. They are afraid of the power of Satan. That the fear will bring the attack of Satan. So we don't want to fear Satan at all. Now, some Christians even fear darkness. As Christians, we want to grow in Christ when we have the experience of casting out demons from people. Then we know that demons are afraid of us. I've seen that many times. And I hope that you will have the chance to cast out demons that you see that demons are afraid of us. So we don't have to be afraid. So we don't fear darkness. We don't fear spirits. Some people are afraid some kind of demons will come to them or or some ghosts will come to them. We don't have to be afraid. Number three, or uh, we don't have to be afraid of witchcraft. We have the protection of God. 
And many Christians just care about themselves and don't think of doing evangelism as a way to, uh, to attack Satan. So to attack Satan, we do evangelism. Then we attack Satan. So how? It's very important that we have how. Now in a sermon, as I said, it's very important to have the nature and grace of God so that we talk about the greatness of God. And then we talk about how. These are two most important parts, okay? How? How can we have victory over Satan? First, trust that Jesus has victory over Satan already. We have victory. We don't have to be afraid of Satan. We have total victory. There's nothing we need to fear. And then we have confidence in Christ. Christ is protecting me. Christ is with me. Christ is staying with me. Christ is blessing me. So we have all these promises to build up a close relationship with God and turn away from all sins. For sins give footholds to Satan. So we want to build up a close relationship with God and turn away from all sins. The key to overcome sins, remember the five steps of victory. First, aware of sins or any kind of problem. First, aware. Second, aware that any kind of problem are destructive. Any kind of sins, any kind of negative things are destructive. Okay, these five steps of victory can help us to overcome uh, emotions or negative thinking or personal problems. So any kind of personal problem uh, is destructive. And three, what does the Bible teach us to do? How to obey God. And three and four, to pray for forgiveness and strength. Five, choose to obey so we know that sins are destructive and we know that when we obey God God will bless us and the Bible teaches us to live a life of holiness to obey God so we pray to God give us strength give us confidence in you we believe we believe that your promises are all true and we believe that when we overcome the sins God is very happy with us so whenever we have any sinful thought when we have the thought of anger, we say this is destructive. I don't want to be angry with people. If they have done something wrong, it's their problem. If I'm angry with them, I cannot change them. But if I'm peaceful with them, I'm calm with them, then I can change them uh, if they are open to us. So we don't want to, we want to choose to overcome anger. When we have anger, we, we just calm down and say, Lord, help me to be peaceful give me peace and then I want to overcome the sins I want to overcome the sins of anger with peace and love and care and forgiveness or if a person has lust that he'll notice that he has lust and he knows that this is destructive now there is a short three points uh, three steps of victory first is aware and second is uh, uh, the, is destructive oh actually it's uh, uh, is prayer so first I know that you know I have sinned and we already believe that it's destructive so we pray for forgiveness and strength and I choose to obey so that's a three step to victory aware and then um, pray and then choose to obey so when we have lust we know that it's destructive and the Bible teaches us to honor people and not to have lust. And whoever looks at a woman with lust already has committed adultery. And then, number four, pray for forgiveness and strength. And number five, I choose to obey and I choose to turn away when I look at a beautiful woman and, it's, and, and then I'm tempted, then I want to stop it. I don't want to think about her as a sex object. I want to honor her as a person. I want to respect her as a person. So I say no to lust. I choose to think godly things instead of having lust. Or if a person is about to have masturbation, he'll say this doesn't honor God and also this will draw me deeper and deeper into lust. So I don't want to think about it. Actually, when you know the less we think about sex, now except when we have sex with our spouse, but in our daily life we don't think about sex. We just 
think about God, think about His blessings, think about blessing people, we find that the thoughts of sex and lust don't come to us as often. The more we think about God and don't think about sex and lust, the less we'll think about it. But when people always think about it, they uh, watch pornography online or watch beautiful women, think about women, then what happens is they will, this lustful thoughts will come to them constantly. And then this can become the attack from Satan. And his whole life can be broken down. Now, how does Satan attack the person? He can ruin the reputation of this person because how he looks at a woman, people notice it. And then people start to lose the trust in this person. They say this person is not trustworthy because he looks at women with lust. And people seize them. And, and also this person is he becomes weak, he becomes weak in his heart because he knows that he has hidden sins. Then he would have fear, he would not have confidence in God. But when we have holiness and you know, loving God, we love God and obey God, then we don't have this attack in our heart, that we don't have this fear and his, this worry, but we have peace and joy and strength in God. And then, uh, how to have victory over Satan when we build up a spiritual life and ability to serve God. Then these are the weapons to attack Satan's dominion. Then we can attack uh, Satan's dominion when we bring people to Jesus Christ, when we help people to love God, when we help people to believe in Jesus and build up the church. Then we are attacking Satan's dominion. And some people said, when you are so active attacking Satan's dominion, he will attack you. That's not true. When we really follow God's way, when we love God and worship God and honor God totally in a church, the church will be protected by God. It's a wrong saying. Some people say, if your church grows so much, Satan will attack you. Now, Satan will try to attack us. But if we seal all the, all the footholds, all the openings, uh, then we, uh, we have a good relationship with God and we love God, honor God, and take care of our sins. Then Satan has no way to attack us. So don't believe in a lie that when we are strong in ministry, then Satan will for sure come to attack you. It's only through sins that Satan can attack us. So we must understand this. So do not be afraid when our church grows. When our church grows, it's very important to build up the relationship with God, that we love God, honor God, worship God, obey Him, and then Satan cannot attack us. Okay, four, put down our pride and submit our thoughts and our lives to God, and then we can have victory in Christ. So put down all the proud things, all the uh, high things that cause us to be proud. There's nothing to be proud of in our lives. Everything we have, we receive from Christ. Number five, when we submit to God and resist the devil, the devil will flee from God. So we uh, flee from us. So we submit to God and obey Him. And whenever the, uh, the devil tempts us, we resist Him. We resist the devil. We don't want to follow the devil. We don't want to follow the temptation. Six, do evangelism and make disciples. This is taking people from Satan's hands. So we attack Satan by bringing people in the kingdom of God and helping people to love God and obey God and serve God, then we are building up a soldier, an army of God, that we can take people from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And seven, the Bible does not talk about victory over Satan by screaming at Satan. The Bible doesn't talk about that. So it's not a way of victory. 